In today's video, I show you the City 8 Kickstarter. But before we get into today's video, just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of May of 2024, we have a pledge to the Hero Stand Display Plinth Kickstarter. We have two pledges for the Starship 6 Soul Survivor Kickstarter the all-in digital pledge, and the all-in digital and physical pledge, which will get you the Erebus printed for you. $100 towards the District 12 crowdfunder, which my Patreon supporters voted upon. And then finally, an all-in pledge for this City 8 Kickstarter, which we will be launching in just a couple of days after I post this video. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page to find out how you can get in on the opportunity to be chosen by Bob this coming Sunday, June 2nd. So Matthew has created a number of really excellent STL files, primarily for fantasy, but now he's branched off into sci-fi terrain. And I'm happy to report that this City 8 Kickstarter has some fantastic looking terrain. The unique thing about this is that there is a lot of LED, battery operated LED lights throughout all of the scatter terrain as well as the buildings as you can see here. Now I have used three different types of LED lights in order to light up all of these projects. One of them are my go-to balloon lights which I find to be the most convenient especially since you can use this little piece of plastic to slip in between the leads of the battery and the light and so it just makes it convenient to turn on and off. Also in some of these is your standard coin battery, the CR2032 battery that you can link up with these loose LED lights. And then finally strip lighting that you use um, two of the coin batteries in order to light up and that is for both this part and this here. I'll go ahead and show you later on in the video how I uh, linked that up because you do have to do a little bit of assembly to create these brighter LED strip lights. Go ahead and use my Amazon affiliate link in the descriptions below. That will just give me a little bit of a kickback and won't cost you anything more. Now just for scale, I have my black pink squad out here on the board. And one of the things about Matthew's STO files is they are big. They are really chunky. And that is the case as well for the sci-fi set. But I like that it takes up quite a bit of space on your table. And this Kickstarter does have, at least from the outset, five different buildings. And here I only have two of them. The smallest one here and then one here. I think there's also an apartment building, a police station, and then one other. So maybe there will be stretch goals. I'm not 100% sure since it hasn't launched yet but use the link to go to the Kickstarter page either, either as a preview or once it launches, you'll be able to see what the campaign is gonna be like. The other thing that I like about his files is um, these stairs actually do work where you can slot in your miniature base into the stairwell and you can be halfway up the stairs. That's one of the things that drives me crazy is non-functional 3D printed stairs where your miniatures actually can't even stand on it. So I like that all of his STL files, it will actually hold your typical 25 or 32 millimeters uh, base. And I really love that about his STLs. I did decide to go a different route than my usual sort of rusted out sci-fi terrain that I've done in the past for most of my a train and instead really wanted to make this color for more of a cyberpunk kind of feel. So I put a lot of color into it with this base sort of silver on everything. Still makes the painting relatively quick, but it's going to be slower than my fast painting method with some of my previous sci-fi terrain where it's just more uniform and more rusted. And I think I achieved the effect primarily by putting really bright splashes of color throughout all of the pieces. And of course, because you're having these light up components to it, it just adds to that cyberpunk feel, this neon cityscape kind of vibe to it, which I think it turned out really excellent. Also here with this sign, I did experiment. I purchased an A1 with an AMS and was experimenting a little bit. I do have to say that I prefer the painted method rather than these really solid blocks of color with the sign 
But of course, it's going to be a lot faster to print. And I will be coming out with a video reviewing the Bamboo A1. So make sure that you are subscribed so that you can be notified once that comes out. But overall, I definitely feel like a painting is better than sort of these solid colors that you see here. But I do think that it looks fantastic and these pieces are really cool. I have it on this Mats by Mars game mat and it just fits the theme really well. So let me share with you really quickly about how I painted up this set. So I spray prime everything black and here I'm using tin, which is craft paint. All of my terrain, I actually paint with craft paint just to save money. And I also print everything at 0.2 millimeter height, which is what I did here with either 10 or 5% infill. Here um, I'm using a hog's hair brush, very stiff, just to get a layer of this darker silver down. If you don't have this specific paint color, just use a darker silver. And then now I'm gonna grab gray sky, which is a really light gray, almost looks white when you put it on. The reason why I don't use white is just because there's very th few things out in nature that is that bright of a white. And so I just find that using either a beige or a gray, a lighter gray, looks better. So that's the option. If you do want to use white, go ahead and feel free to do that. I find that it's a little bit harder to get good coverage with white versus this really light gray. And just randomly paint some panels this uh, light gray and you can just totally be random with where you put it on like I did here. Go ahead and grab some other colors. I chose blue for the top of this roof but you can pretty much choose any color that you want and you can choose to paint whatever pieces that you want to because you'll notice that I've randomly kept a lot of pieces silver, the base color versus um, whatever pieces that I choose to colorize. So entirely up to you how you want to do it. This is Georgia clay, which is sort of a darker orange. I'm going to be using this just for this, uh, not 100% sure what it is, but sort of this uh, crinkled up tube that's on the corner of this building. And I did have to put two coatings on this. So after it dries, uh, put another coat. And when you're painting over a dark undercoat like I am, sometimes some of these colors, especially the brighter colors, do need a second coat. Here I'm grabbing some red and going to be, again, just picking out uh, different pieces and coloring them. I'm choosing to go uh, color this red across this tube that's across the top of the roof section. And then we'll go ahead and just find random pieces throughout just to color red. Here's just an assortment of other colors that I used. It's not even all the colors that I used, but we'll go and just randomly pick little spots here and there uh, to create color variety. And like I said, this is sort of a colorful steampunkish kind of, or cyberpunkish kind of futuristic um, terrain. So very bright and just pick out whatever little pieces here and there. And these STLs are great to be able to do that. So just randomly sort of pick various spots to make it colorful. Here, um, this is the markers and I printed out all the clear parts in clear PLA. And again, uh, links in the descriptions below. And I'm using super glue just to glue all of the pieces together. So after I'm done painting, I go ahead and glue in the pieces. I find it easier to paint before I glue the pieces in but honestly, it isn't that big of a deal which order you go in. But definitely with the clear pieces because you don't want to get paint on them, I tend to put them in after I'm done with my painting. Some people do ask if I do put a clear varnish on top of my terrain. To be honest, I don't. You probably should because then it will protect the paint colors more uh, better, but I'm just too lazy. I just don't do it. Here are the different lights. So these again use the Amazon link below if you wanted to pick up some of these lights as well as these um, batteries, 2032 batteries. This is a color shifting LED. So there's a ton of different colors that you can find, but I like the ones that are color shifting, especially the ones that blink 
And earlier in the video, um, those are the bulbs that I have are the blinking ones because you just notice the color a lot better. Also, once you stick these in, I do use a little bit of painter's tape to stick and keep the battery in. And then here are the signs. Again, uh, these I go ahead and glue in these um, clear signs into the holder. I don't glue in the LED light but only the clear section I went ahead and glued all of those pieces on because you don't really need access. These are called balloon lights and these are my favorite because they are really easy to use. Already have a battery in them. You just pull out this little plastic piece to turn it on and um, there's just on the spots that use these balloon lights. Um, I just These are my favorite lights. Let's just put it that way because they're easy to use turn on and off. Here I'm going to show you um, what goes into the longer strip lights, LED strip lights. So you do need some of these things. But don't bother getting these connectors, even though I'm going to link it, because it didn't work. The wires for the battery holder are so thin that you actually don't pierce it with these connectors. So I ended up taping it, and I'll show you that later, onto these LED strips. So you don't really need the connectors. But here you're going to see that there are uh, two copper ends that you need to put the battery connector wires onto. So I measure it out first and then I actually cut it. You can just use scissors and cut right across these copper leads. And here I'm showing you um, trying to use these quick connectors and I wish it worked because it's way faster. But what I ended up doing is just ditching the connectors and um, what's great about these STLs is you just stick them into the STL. They, they come with a slot to be able to put the battery holder. And then you can just turn it on. And I probably could have gone, gone shorter with the wires, but I just used masking tape and stuck on the wires directly onto those copper leads. So that worked out really well for me. And here I'm showing you um, how to thread in the LED. And what's great about this is it has a sticky backing and that's what I'm peeling is just to be able to um, stick down or press down. Uh, once I get it in place where I want it to be in place, you can just press it directly onto your print and it will stay there, which is awesome. So here again, I show you with masking tape, I just put the bare wires onto any place along the LED strip. It doesn't have to be at the end. And I just reinforce it with a second piece of tape so that it doesn't come off. Then you can just switch it on just like this. And I tuck the wire away and I'm able to have this strip of really bright lights, brighter than if you were to have um, just individual lights. A lot easier to have an on off switch. And then put the plastic pieces over it like this. And there you go. And in the video, it doesn't show you how bright they are. I'm not sure why. It might be the type of uh, wavelength, but uh, super bright, which I'm very happy with. And here is the box and brand I got. Again, use my Amazon link. So there you go. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and the notification so that you know when my future videos come out. And again, use the many links that I have provided in this video for any of the lights that you want. Also going to the Kickstarter page or to check out Matthew's other projects, previous projects on his website for DecoQuest. Happy printing. Happy gaming. We'll see you next time.